Welcome to the Tony Olsen Fishing Show. This, believe it or not, is one of the earliest beach fishing reels there is. It's called a Scarborough. Fancy casting. Big lens from the shore with that thing. My goodness me. They must have been brave men, mustn't they? It got me wanting to go beach fishing. Where can I go? A long drive down to Kent. Big shingle bank called Dungeness. I haven't been there for so many years it doesn't bear thinking about. Let's get down there. I'm all fired up. This reel got me going. And see if we can't catch at least something. Whee! It's a peninsula of shingle that sits out in the English Channel. And over there, you can probably see it over there, is the Dungeness Power Station. And over there are the Dungeness Power Anglers. And over there are rakes and rakes of Dungeness Power Anglers. Now, I haven't fished here for something like 35 years, so I've no idea what it's like, but I've come to give it a go. Um, I've got about half flood up at the moment. I think high tide's about 1.30 when I looked at it. Um, there's a famous mark called the Boils down there where the water's pumped out to, uh, uh, from, the, from the reactors or whatever they have in there. Um, two or three other marks, the one I'm fishing one was called the Ball Ball. We've had to walk quite a ways. There's so many anglers. I can't imagine what it'd be like at the weekend. Manic, I should think. Well, I wouldn't fish it the weekend. I'd go midweek. And even then, there's 50, 60 anglers here. Anyway, I've got bait-wise, down in here, I've got some black lug, I've got some squid, I've got some mackerel. This one's got a special nose wide lead. It's about a good six, seven ounces. That one seems to be holding that. It's got half a mackerel on. So that is my seek and destroy one up there. And I've got my spinner just thrown out here because I'm looking at the distance the other guys are throwing, not throwing too far. So I figured my spinning rod might hold like a four or five ounce fixed nose weight there. If I lose it, I lose it. They say so many people, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of anglers, have broken off, broken off, broken off. That line, we all know, doesn't biodegrade. It's just there for your grip lead to snag. So you snag again, that makes a worse snag. Somebody else snags in it, that makes a worse snag. So they tell me down there below the line in the two lighthouses is Snag City. So I've avoided that and I've walked basically as far away from anybody as I can get. So here I am, a couple of rods out. I might chuck another big bait out with squid. I'm just basically sussing it out for tide. I should have a little bit of high water here, and then I've got the ebb. Now, I might have to move on the ebb, because I see it's gonna hit this peninsula and absolutely whistle past it. It might be unfishable. I might have to move all the way down there. So here I am, as they say, wish me luck. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need it after a three hour drive. Okay, I've managed to get another rod out there, because there's a little bit of a gap about 100 yards either side of me. It might fill up, I don't know. And uh, rather than put a second big squid bait out, I fired one out as far as I can with a decent sized leg, a bit of a risk losing it. Um, and I've got small hooks and I've put half a lug and half a sandal bound together. Because the reason being, I've been sort of looking up and down when I've got the old, the old specs on and there's a match up there because they told me, oh, don't go down that end, there's 30 odd guys all fishing away in a match. But I've seen something come out there, something come out here. Look, not big fish, just small fish. You see the guys winding in like this, so you know when the hands come up, you automatically look, he's winding in, has he got weed, is he in a snag, has he got a fish? So I'm always looking, being a photographer, you see you know, who's catching what where. And there's been two down there and one there, but they've been real small, but I don't know if they're whiting, they look like bass, because when you catch a whiting, generally just flips and flops on the hook a little bit, but a bass will twist and flick around a lot. I've got a feeling they're catching bass here, I don't know, that's my gut feeling, and that's what's made me put that half a sandal on there. But Listen guys, I'm just giving it a go. The boil's right down there, there's loads and loads of birds down there. Probably great fun to fish, I know there's gonna be anglers down there. But I'm just gonna uh, soldier on here and then see what happens at high water. If I don't catch anything to save the blank, I've got to save the blank after a three hour drive. Once I've saved that blank, if I have, then I will put big baits out. And we can almost risk throwing one in very, very, very close. They seem to be holding, but until I get the first cast wound in, then I don't really know. I think they're all, I can see a dark shape there. I think they're all on lug. They've probably got lug and squid wraps up there. And I'm gonna stick with big baits and small baits either end and close in far out. It's cold, northerly. Listen, I'm in one of the iconic beach fishing spots of England. It's just nice to be here. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to show you what baits I've got in here. These are, as you can see there, 
their fresh frozen sand eel. That's my double A grade premium pack that I'm trying to save. I didn't want to lug the cooler all the way down here, but I have got some that partly thawed out in another bag of mess here, which I'm basically snapping off. Bits of squid, bits of mackerel. I've also got mackerel here, which I might fire one of these out whole and just see, you know, what is there. And of course I've bought some squid, which is extortionately expensive, and I've got some squid there. I think I said left over from one of my boat fishing days. But listen, what we have got here are what they call black lug. Now they come in a wrap. You buy them per 10, there's one I'm currently hooking up, but I'll show you what they do. They roll them in newspaper like this individually to soak the juices up. These have been probably freshly dug yesterday. Now you can see how this worm is there. You think, oh, I'd, I'd look at, well, let me show you that other one. It looks a bit limp, it's dead. I've paid good money, they're about £2.75 for 10, these things. And they've been gutted. You see the guts there, just hanging out. You leave them on or pull them off. Well, what you do is you slam them down on the shingle and just watch, if I can hold this camera still, you'll see it move, watch. Can you see that move then? Give it another one. Really hard and you should be able to see it move. It tightens and firms up so they're a long way from being dead. And that just makes them really firm. Whack them down. Really hard like, like that. See them move. And they're firm. They're tight. Very, very, very strong. A couple of those on a big hook or panel is very good for cod. I'm not prepared to risk it yet. at the moment. I want to see what's coming out. So you can use black lug. You can also get fresh, what's called fresh outs, which are much better, juicier, but they are much softer. So this is called a wrap, like that, and you buy them 10 worms. You got a three hook rig? That's gonna get expensive, buddy. Right, I get bored really quickly. So, the rod close in here, the little spinning rod here, okay? That one's holding pretty well where I cast it. The big baits where I've cast out have been dragged round. And what you should do is, what I've done is I've gone up here, I've walked up the beach 20 or 30 yards, cast out there the lead sinks, the currents pouring that way, and I let a big belly of line like that go into the lead. So it pushes on the belly of the line and pulls the grip leads in, just pulls them in. Then when you get a bite, it will either be a pull down or a pull down followed by a spring back of the rod top. As that bigger fish, let's say it's a cod, a bass, a ray or something like that, he's going to actually dislodge the lead, it's going to give you a slack line, it's going to bump away down tide. So if you see a slack liner, what we call a slack liner, in other words I cast that line here and the next thing you know, look, the tension's like that and then it's straight and there's a big billowing line wind down and strike straight away because slack liners invariably are caused by bigger fish because they've got the power to actually trip the grip wire. That one, I'm on braid there, so that cutting through a bit better. So this one's got a whole, uh, no, half a mackerel, it's got a half a mackerel tail on there, hopefully for a ray or something larger, and a nose wire grip lead should be holding out. And this one, spinner's close in, three hooks. This one I've bombed out a long way, three hooks. Because I've gone a long way, I cast it way up here, there's a cardinal boy there. I cast way up there, it's already tripped, gone down there. It's not been tripped by a fish because there's tension on it. It's just where the tide, I cast, the, oh, look, the more line you put in the water, the farther you cast, the more pressure's on the line, the more chance you're going to get your lead trip out. So I'm just sort of suck it and see at the moment. It's nice and flat with this northerly wind, they say it needs a bit of a chop, but I'll settle for anything at this stage. Well, one thing's for sure, if I fish into the night, I won't be short of any electricity with that power station over there. If my batteries run out, I'll walk over and get plugged in and charge my, uh, charge my headlamp. I could charge my phone up as well over there, plug in. I want to see what happens at the top of time. Over there is the old and new lighthouse. There's the old lighthouse over there. And there's the new lighthouse, and what they used to do was line the two up, which is over that side, and that was used to be the area they used to uh, fish a lot. It used to be an area called the dustbin around here, long round the point somewhere, I don't exactly know where it was, but it used to sort of hold all the food up there, and apparently it's changed now over the last sort of 40 years, and the fishing is nothing like it used to be, but listen, it can apparently still be very, very good fishing here. Well... I've got fish on here guys, on the long rod fish well out, I don't know what they are, whitey and bass, it must be what the other guys are catching as well, 
Get that weed off the shot, Lee. Oh, double shot of. There we go. A double shot of whiting, boys. Hardly surprising at somewhere Dungeness with the power station in the background. They're going to go back. But at least he tells me that there's fish out there. And that just hooked the bait out was that wrap I made. Sand hill and lug wrap. Just chuck that old boy back, keep that bait, you never know. And this one as well. Save the blank. There we go. That is the whiting. The fighting whiting. Good nighting. And there you see he's chewed that bait well down. Nothing on the whole bait. But hardly surprising. Wow, that gives me a bit of hope anyway. I've got this one all ready. Always find it's best to throw your inside rod out first. So it, uh, you can cast then the long rod over the top. And I'm just going to, I've seen a lot of fish just dimpling as it will, just splashing quite close. So I'm going to heave that no more than about, what's that, 40 yards? I've got a nose grip lead there. Walk it back up here. And that one can go in what I call my shotgun position there for a moment. Wow, nice to save the blank. What can I say? Saving the blank, that's what it's all about. Game on now. Let's get a few more. All right, here we go. That bait can be rolled around basically I feel slid up to there you can see I've got it just like that and just re-whipped again just like that bind it on a little bit it keeps it neat keeps the worm together keeps the worm and the sandal together that one's fine that one needs some attention we get a piece of shingle, we're going to slap it down, make it firm up like this, it firms up. And then, what I do is this, I'm hoping you guys are actually seeing this, that it doesn't really matter, you do your own baiting how you want, it's just how I'm baiting. I put about a third of the worm, pop it over the hook, snap it off, take a section of sand deal, just hook it once through the say the tail then I roll it back like that over the top of the hook so I'm making a sort of tube effect there well that really is windy I don't know if you're let me turn that way you might not hear the wind in the mic so much can't help it it's a windy day bind it all together make sure if you can that the hook point is always like this showing that is perfectly good enough for whiting, pouting, small school bass. If you have a big bait, you're probably going to get nothing except one big fish. With a small bait, at least you can go home catching something. And that's what it's all about. And I rolled it right back. I do this with ragworm as well. You don't have to have it, you know, just with um, lugworm. It can be ragworm. I've done very well with it. It just helps hold it all out straight rather than have it go around the bend of the hook in some sort of gobby mess. Nothing worse than that. There we go. That one's ready to whiz out there as well. Well, I had something on the end there. I just let go right at the last minute. I don't know if it was a dogfish. It felt like a couple of pounds, something like that. Did, oh no, hang on, what's that? How's this worked out? This is a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, it's a dab, okay. This was, wait for this, a half mackerel, guys. That was a half a mackerel. Look what's happened. I guess the crabs have stripped it all down and I've struck to break the lead out and wind in and I got myself a dab. Wow, is it his unlucky day or what? So white in a dab, so I don't care how, where or whatever they're hooked on, they're hooked. Now tell the dab that you hold it up to the light, you can see right through there. I don't know if you guys can see that, hopefully. Let's get this little chappy back. It's a bit unlucky for him, I have to say. But lucky for him, I'm going to be letting him go. So there's dabs out there as well, but I think something might have had hold of that, you know, because I lost it, dropped it right in close. Just chuck him back, you go. 
Well, obviously, I mustn't leave that bait out there too long. They said don't leave it out too long as it gets tangled. I left it an hour. Just let me show you the wire. I've got what we call a, a nose wired lead here, sort of fixed wire, and these are on this. It's very, very springy wire. They'll spring out. They don't break out, they spring out. So I'm going to lump another big bait out. I think I've got to put the big bait out. And that's half a mackerel and that's all they left me. So even with that tide ripping, the crabs are still out there. And the guy's just walked along. He's done, I don't know, 50 anglers or so. Nothing big, a couple of baby bass and a few baby whiting. So I'm in the same league as everybody else at the moment. Listen boys, I'm taking a bit of a gamble here. I'm going for a half section of mackerel. I'm going seek and destroy just in case it might be a big bass there. That is a big bait, I have to say. How I'm going to get that out, they're not going to get it too far, am I? Elasticate it on with a bit of thread. And I'll make sure that hook point's showing like that. Can you see that? I don't suppose there's a lot of people use big baits here, but I've got my little baits. So I know I could probably get the white in, but the tide should be easing any minute now. <sighs> There we go. That's ready to be dripped out. It's ready to be dripped all over my sandwich, my wife's sandwich box, box and bag. And that's ready to be posted out there. So what we do, this is on a, if you can see this, I don't know. That last bit of thread off. It's called uh, a pulley rig. It works like a pulley system. And just in here, there's a little notch you can see there into which you put. I'm hoping you can see this, look, the hook like that. So it hangs like this, and then when a fish takes, uh, when it hits the water, it breaks free, and you can wind in. And when you wind in, the lead, I just put it there, you see this slides like a pulley. So you'll be pulling, if you've got a fish on the end, the fish falls down here, hook fish, slides the lead up, and hopefully it gets it up and out of the current, and rocks, and snags, and weeds. It's a very good rig for big fish. Well, it was turning into something for production line for whiting. It doesn't matter whether it was the distant rod or whether it was a close in spinning rod just lobbed out there. The fighting whiting were biting. And I, I was grateful to catch anything, to be honest. But what did bother me, I kept seeing fish breaking close in. You can indicate it by these birds here. There were bass, small bass working on white bait and breaking every so often. Just literally, I can't tell you, a rod length out. You can see that bird hovering over the top of a bass. So I, all I had in the tackle box was a, one of those pop-up beads to use as a float, a single carp hook, and a sprat. And I thought, if I can drift that down the margins in the current, it was going very, very fast on the inside. They were taking just behind where those waves were. And then I would walk along, following the float along, this little pop-up bead, and even that didn't work. So I thought, right, how can I make a white bait, so I've taken the belly strip cut here off a sprat because that's nice and silver, and I'm trying to shape it into a long, thin piece of brit or sand. Well, not even sandy, I've got sandals, but they wanted white bait, they didn't want the sandy or dried that, so I even gave that a try. No, that didn't work. Anyway, what I did get was some good old South Coast toilet paper and a whiting. You can't get away from it, can you? So, fish were on the bite. Would anything bigger coming? I don't know whether anything bigger was going to come or not. Oh, perhaps not. That, guys, is a seal right where my baits are. Doesn't look good for me, does it? First it's otters, now it's seals. Well, the tide's dropping, people. The tide has dropped right away, and I've got two fish at least. Wow, one's a big one. Oh my god, one is a... Oh, it's a triple! I've got a triple! <laughs> oh, look at that! Hey, I was like washing! Hey, I us put the big one at the front, that's a nice whiting! That back one, look at this, guys! Hey, a dab and two whiting! And that whiting there is a nice whiting! Good fish! 
The dab is unlucky again. He's not hooked in the mouth. I wonder if it's the same dab. Oh, there he goes. Well, I'm having a good time catching small fish. Nothing big coming at the moment. But that one is just nicked on there, guys. That is, I think you'll agree, pretty nice size whiting that one. That's a good fish. Well, I've just relocated a bit down the beach. Everybody else seems to be packing up again. A couple of guys up there, they're packing up. I know the fish has been tough. I've done okay, really. Nothing big, look. But uh, good supply of whiting. And, well, I've got three hooks out on one rod, and I bring in two whiting and a dab. I can't catch any more, can I? You know, I filled all three hooks up. I cannot complain. I just check out this sunset. This is a view from my current office of the day. Not bad. And I don't know why those other guys go home. When you've got a view like this and a flat sea. Well, there's one guy up there, two guys up there, and they're worth 50 or 60. Talk about when the going gets tough, the tough get going. When the going gets tough, this guy has a cup of tea. Let's get the kettle on. Not going home yet for sure. What the freaking hell? I've got no eyebrows left. Is it the stuff still there? Oh, thank God it's still there. Well, at least if my moustache and eyebrows catch fire, I've got some water to put it out. Hello, I just had a, I just had a visual bite on that light close in rod. That's interesting. Yes, definitely a look at. But they're telling me I shouldn't be catching fish close in on high water. There's no food in amongst the shingle. Well, there's fish in amongst the shingle. Let's get the kettle on. Oh dear, it looks like the last two guys packing up. So I have now, if you look along the beach, the only person pretty well on Dungeon S. Right down the hot spot, alleged hot spot anyway, there's the boils in the background. I'm the only person, look. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe there's, and there's other guys packing up down there. Tells you what the fish has been like, but I am not giving up. Oh, oh, oh guys. Guys, 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 guys. Just check. Just check. Just check it. Almost sure. I saw a bite out of the corner of my eye there, hammering. There he is, there he is, there he is. That's not waves, I'm over the top of the waves. There he goes, there he goes, that's a bite. But there's no fish over shingle. I rest my case. Why do people go home just at dark when the, I know the tide's falling, I know it's not in the books when it's supposed to be fishable, but listen, it's night fishing, as soon as it gets dark, change over a species. More whiting. Well, it's strange now, it's like halfway down on the tide, and it seems to go up really quickly. And yet there's no pull on it, I don't understand. In fact, I've got trouble tightening up to the grip left. I don't know, I keep going slap, slap, slap all the time. I don't understand it. Still, plenty of fish coming and a cup of tea, can't grumble, and getting dark, so who knows what comes out then. And the other guys are packing up as well. So that is me with the entire strip of Dungeness fishing on my own in November. I mean, that's peak time. I think what I might do is put more worms on because I've got some of those black lug wraps left. I might down the lead size because I can cast farther with a with a slightly lighter lead if that makes sense. 
the heavy lead I've got here to hold out is like seven ounces. That's the sort of maximum size of my rod. It'll throw eight, but I don't like it. So I think if I go down to a six, sort of torpedo bomb shaped regular grip, I might be able to hold it, I'll get some more distance. I'm pretty sure that'll put me on the sand. Just don't pack up too early, guys. As you can see, they are on the bike big time. And do you know what? This is just, look, it's not but beach rod. Let's click that off. That is just a spinning rod, spinning rod, spinning reel. Similar thing I use pike fishing. So I'm having a great time here. Everybody else has gone home. I've got the whole of Dungeon Nest to myself. No cod, look, no cod, no bass, but whatever. I'm catching fish. That's all that matters at the end of the day. I'm going to give it at least, at least another hour. Right on the other road guys, just setting this one up, see if I can get it for you. Here we see if I can zoom in. You watch him stop biting now. Just as I set that one up, the other one started hammering. And that's just on the spinning rod. Here he goes, here he goes. You see both rod breasts. Uh, both rod tops now, I've just paint mine with white gloss paint, nothing fancy, just regular, there are, oh, man, that's a bite. Now he's probably hooked, I might leave those out there, because a, a bass or a cook could come along and take that. You can actually make a live bait rig whereby you hook a whiting and you leave it out there with a bigger hook as well. And there, long comes Mr. Cod and eats absolutely everything. Yeah, he's definitely hooked on there, that one. Or, if you're in a match or anything, you can leave him, yeah, he's on there and see if you can get a second one, or maybe even a third one. In fact, I've got one on the left-hand rod. Look at the left-hand rod as well. That's whiting bites on absolutely both rods. And they've only been out minutes. Look, 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 hammering. I'm looking at my big rods behind me as well. So I've got the tide starting to ebb now. For some reason, it's like four hours down and it's only just starting to pull. Here you can see the beam of the lighthouse just going around. So that's the new lighthouse that's, uh, that's working up there. Got the red light, I guess, for aircraft, and then you can see the beam go round as we count it. 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0. Looks like 7 seconds, I'll give that. Might be 8 seconds. And that's how you uh, check where you are on the charts. Well gone a little bit quiet. I could pack up and go home. My gut feeling says I've probably seen the best of it. But you never know. With beach fishing you never know. And I'll tell you what I like about it. In fact, I've got the whole beach to myself. That's not the main problem. It's just the relaxing noise that you get down at the water's edge when it's not a big pounding storm coming in. I mean it really is idyllic and that's why I love sea fishing and beach fishing. little tips as I always use. A wind shelter for the gas there. So I'm gonna have a cook up and I've got in there, as you can see it's worth chucking in, hot dogs, because you can eat those cold anyway, and spaghetti bolognese. And they really go together, they both heat up well. I just eat them straight out of the pan. Hopefully 
hopefully not catching my backpack alive. The food of kings, guys. Well, the food of beach fishermen, me anyway. Yes, it's going to be very, very hot. But, tell you what, on a cold night, waiting for a big cod or a bass or anything to come along, it's worth it. Plus, I get to melt my plastic kneecaps. Mm. Those hot dogs are the way to go. Hey guys, I don't, I don't know what to say. I do. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I mean... <coughs> Dungeness is certainly living up to its name as far as whiting are going. Three ago. All going back. The other one I had was definitely big enough to eat. Put that one back as well. So some great fishing here. So thanks for watching the show. We'll see you again next time on the beach, the bank, the boat, wherever. And don't forget to watch Mike's Totally Awesome Outdoor Show called TA Outdoors. And don't forget, guys, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more films, we've got over 600 films up now. Most of them I do just on my own like this. Plenty of fish here on the beach at the moment. Give it an hour and then I'm off home. Had a great session, about 30-odd whitey, and they're still going three at a time now. Oh, my God. I think it's just when I'm running out of worms. We'll see you next time.